Alright, it's about time somebody makes a series on this game. I beat Insane Mode on the kitchen. And here's how. I started a new profile, so we're going through the tutorial again, but since it doesn't affect the rest of the game, we're just gonna skip past it. Once we unlock Spider, we really just want to rush to the tutorial so we can get the preparation started for round 20. Well, really, we only have to get to round 20, but that's besides the point. Also, this is on a new profile, so anything we got in the introductory video is not going to be in this. These first few rounds are going to be great for gathering food, because there's no real threat to our bugs. But that's about it. Nothing else exciting is really going on here, so we're just gonna speed on through them. This was a great early quest. The Coin Collector quest is great early game because you're not gonna have any threats going and getting the coins, and it's a great source of money. I mean, look at that. We just got a bonus 200, plus the coins themselves give us money, and you get levels! The coin quest is one of the best to accept for the game. The first thing I spend my money on is a good base defense to carry us through the game. You may think it's not good enough to carry us through the whole game, but if we upgrade it, it definitely is. The next thing we're going to want to buy is food capacity. Now you may think that's not going to be that useful, but trust me, it is. It's going to allow us to carry more food on our heroes and in our base. And we want to keep our base topped off and our heroes at at least half health the entire game. And if we're going out and getting food that whole time and getting money at the same time, then we need to have a high capacity so we can stay out for a longer time and so we don't get raided as easily. A big mistake I made in the last video is I bought bug weapon upgrades and bug abilities before these very vital base things. So I was overrun easily, and as you can see, I can kill everything with ease without the weaponry. We want to save that for late game so we can defend ourselves and keep our base safe in the early game. But by no means is this run without mistakes. I accepted a quest you should almost never accept, which is the slave quest. See, the reason why you don't want to accept this quest is because you need weaponry, good weaponry, to do it, which is not a good thing to do at late game or early game. If you leave to go do it or go do it just period in the late game, you will get overrun, bad things are gonna happen, and in the early game, it you just don't have good enough weaponry. It's really just not a quest worth taking. I even took it in the middle of a siege, which makes it even worse. I didn't even get to complete the quest. Okay, now that we're past my big mistake, we need to do stuff that's productive. I accepted a coin quest in the middle of the siege. You've got 8 minutes to do it and 10 coins to collect. That's not bad at all. But now you're starting to see why it's such a big mistake. I can't even complete the coin quest, and I'm stuck inside the wall with two armor ants and a slug. I also got trapped by a flea. I was sandwiched between two armor ants and a stupid flea, and now a slug is guarding the exit. Do you see why it's such a bad idea to accept these quests on the kitchen? In the kitchen, your main bug should be Spider. She has great mobility and damage. And there's not a lot of things that can shoot her in the kitchen, so we're all good there. So let's talk about skills. You're going to first want to max out your speed and then work on assassinate. The reason you want speed first is so you can get to point A to B faster, and since you're not going to need a ton of damage early game, it's not that important to get assassinate. But trust me when I say assassinate is amazing. It does crazy damage a lot of the time if you do max it out. After assassinate, you should do health. The reason why is because self-defense isn't really that good, and having extra health is nice, but not near as nice as assassinate or speed. Another reason I don't really like self-defense is it knocks the enemy away from you, and as spider, you want the enemy up and close to you, that way you can 
hit it more and do more damage. I guess it's decent if you want to knock away a centipede, but centipedes aren't really that bad if you have execute and superior assassin, so I think you'll be good with just health. Snails are back, but I did pretty well with them this time. Also, abusing turn radius is amazing. You see how slow they turn? I can kill them so easy. And there's so many things you can do that with. It's amazing. If we want the best chance of survival, we're better off not accepting any quests that spawn any sort of bug, because that would give us more of a challenge. And this is already challenging enough. This is the first level. I've tried this level like five times already. And we don't really need the money that bad. We're pretty good on money, honestly. These next few rounds weren't really anything special. I did make a lot of progress in terms of food and pretty good progress in terms of money. Our defense got a bit stronger, that's about it. There was a small siege, but it's nothing that our extremely overpowered crit damage can't take care of. Also, I got a sandwich, one of the best food sources out there. I did get into a little bit of a sticky situation over here, literally, but it ain't nothing that some beetle swapping can't take care of. Multiple times in this run, you'll see I like to keep my spider at 120 or 140 health, as that's enough to keep her alive for a while. And it's a lot less damaging to our base than just filling her up. I was warned by Ant that a huge group of bugs were coming for our base, so I went to finish up the coin collector before it failed, because if I waited until after the siege, it would fail. I went ahead and finished off the quest and got an extra level up for Ant that I'm probably never going to use. But now it was siege time. Now you notice in these sieges, I'll take care of the maggots. Those are my number one priority, because they will shred your base if you don't deal with them quickly. Now there was a big grub coming directly to our base, and that would be bad. The turrets can take care of the small grubs, but not really the big grubs. And the maggots usually go inside of grubs, and even sometimes other maggots, they could stack on top of each other. So they're just a giant pain. They will shred your base from a distance. I mentioned this in the introductory video. These things are not to be trifled with. These are the last few rounds where we're going to get any sort of breathing room. Things are going to get insane in a couple rounds. There's gonna be bumblebees, centipedes. If we want to beat wave 19 and get to wave 20 to complete our challenge, we're gonna have to defend. And so begins the final preparations. If we're gonna want to defend against- hey wait, my game froze. What the heck, man? And so begins the final preparations again. If we're going to want to defend against centipedes and bumblebees, we're going to need high damage. And that's where Spider comes in. I unlocked the biggest weapon, and I'm ready to get Executioner, Superior Assassin, and Ninja Smoke. Cockroaches have been added to the roster. They shouldn't be that big of a deal until the scorpions come. And so begins the grind for money and food. I'm going to go out and kill bugs for money and take food at the same time, bring it back to the base, heal up my heroes, do all the shenanigans with food. Getting food at this point is going to be vital to keep our base topped off and ready to take a little bit of damage from sieges. I need to ultra focus on the centipedes so they don't come and kill our base immediately. This is why you want to upgrade your turrets, so they can fend for themselves against a couple grubs, maybe a large grub and a couple maggots. While I focus on the centipede, because if it gets to our base, we're dead. Which is why we need all this crazy amount of damage. Any extra food that won't go into the stash will be used to heal my bugs. This way they can take a little bit more damage and we won't be wasting food. We now have to deal with big spiders spawning, which are pretty much these things that spawn baby spiders that latch on you, do damage to you, and make you slower. So in the earlier rounds, we want to go out and kill the big spider, but in later rounds, we should just be camping the base and letting our turrets just mow down the baby spiders as they try to latch onto us. because. 
we have to sit there and defend this whole time. And now you see why critical hits are so good. This thing usually has a ridiculous amount of health. As you can see, we're getting our turrets pretty high level. It's going to help us defend a whole lot. Now we're going to start buying our abilities so we can start doing some real damage because bubble bees are coming soon. In the introduction of your video, this is where I took a lot of unnecessary damage to my heroes and my base because this siege has a lot of maggots and a giant snail. So I was just chipping away at the giant snail and killing these maggots. I wasn't letting them get close to the base. I was not camping the base like I did before. And this time I was a lot more efficient and this giant snail was easily defeated this time. This is where things got chaotic. You'd better be happy that I got a sandwich because we definitely need that extra food now. Even though a siege wasn't happening, a giant horde of maggots spawned right next to the base. If I wasn't at the base, we would have been shredded. But luckily they didn't even touch the base. A lot of armor ants spawn in this round, but luckily I've gotten pretty good at killing them. If I crit, I can two-shot them. If I don't crit, I can three-shot them. I denied a history scroll quest just because we're far in this run and I don't think it would be a wise idea to have pill bugs on us while we're trying to fight two bumblebees at the same time. I've gotten a lot better at dodging bumblebees so it wasn't that hard to kill them. The armor ants were a nuisance, but again, they weren't really that bad. I've got these guys' attack patterns down pretty well. Another horde of maggots came, but they weren't much of a problem because of our ridiculous damage and highly upgraded turrets. The rest of round 14 was really just giving us a break from what we had just witnessed. I did have to go kill a big spider and let the turrets kill the babies. And there were a couple firing teams, but that was about it. We also bought Executioner, which was good because right after that, round 15 started and I was warned that a centipede was coming after us. You'll notice I'm not letting the large grubs get to the base because our turrets can handle the small ones, but not so much the large ones. It was time to start killing the massive centipede. I did some good damage with Executioner and knocked it back. The army fleas were not happy and they began shooting at me. While killing the centipede, I am actually taking a sizable amount of damage from the army fleas, but it's nothing to be worried about. And eventually, with enough criticals, the centipede died, giving us some more time to go out and gather supplies. We also bought Superior Assassin, which will help us with any future centipede attacks. Grubs and maggots were still trying to get to us, but I wouldn't let them. Also, we bought Ninja Smoke. This round honestly wasn't that bad, but the next three rounds are going to be pretty darn bad.
Round 17 came, and with it came scorpions. Now it was time to abuse their turn radius. But if you do get hit by them, it can be very dangerous. As you can see, I had to swamp to beetle just to get out of there without dying. Here we are abusing turn radius again, except this time the other bugs aren't having it. Whenever cockroaches and scorpions get together, it is not a combo that you want to be next to. I literally almost died here. I was on 9 health. If I died here, that would have been run over. GG, good game. Good thing I didn't die there. We also maxed out our health, and also the game gave us a quest that would be like the worst quest ever to accept. Use Beetle only for 5 minutes. Yeah, right. And yet another huge group of bugs were coming to our base, so it was time to prepare. A centipede had spawned, and for some reason I teleported behind it and knocked it towards our base. I don't know what I was thinking there, but that's besides the point. It was time to kill another centipede. Superior Assassin came in clutch because it literally slows down time, which makes killing this thing pretty easy. It was time for the final round. All we had to do was beat this and the challenge would be over. The only problem is, there's already a centipede here. And there are two large grubs stuck inside of it, so this is going to be very annoying. And the army fleas definitely weren't helping either. It was almost at our base. It was time to start frantically searching for anything that would even slightly increase our damage. Eventually, however, I settled on Poison Clown for some extra damage over time. Eventually, though, with the help of Superior Assassin, the Centipede died, and we were almost done with our challenge. After some cleaning up and healing, it was time to go kill another bumblebee. Abusing turn a little bit, we got some good damage on it. We also got our first self-defense point. We also had to heal up again. And before I could even kill the bumblebee, we got the achievement Bug Legend and we completed round 19. We only had to wait a couple seconds now. Three, two, one, round 20. And that is our challenge done. I did try to beat round 20, but my spider was low on health. I was getting swarmed. A centipede was already back. In the end, my spider died and my beetle could just not do enough damage to keep the base alive. So ends our challenge. I hope you guys enjoyed. This took me a long time to edit. If you like Bug Heroes 1 content, then this is probably the only place you'll find it. For now, at least. So please, if you enjoyed and you want to see more Bug Heroes Insane Mode, or even just my other content, I will be uploading more Bug Heroes Insane Mode and other stuff. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. I know literally all YouTubers say that, but there's a darn good reason that they do. I'll also probably be doing Buck Heroes 2 and Quest at some point. And with that, Mantis has been unlocked. I'll see you guys next time in the office.